Hi, everybody. My name is Naritzi Sanchez, and I'm today's host of the Community Relations Teams Group Conversation. We are here with most of the team today, um, but we'd love to just hear any initial questions that you might have for us. I see that there's already something in the doc. So Madeline, do you mind uh, vocalizing your question? Happy to. Thanks, Naritzi. Um, mine's more of an operational question. So during territory assignments at the start of the fiscal year, some of the EDU and OSS accounts were assigned into account executives' names. And for those that don't currently have a sales opportunity attached to them, um, who is the appropriate person to assign those accounts to? Sure. So uh, Christina and I can help answer this. And just for context for other people, Christina and I run free community programs. Those are the GitLab for Education, GitLab for Open Source, and GitLab for Startups programs. And uh, we they're essentially $0 accounts. Um, I put a link to this in the notes, Madeline, but there is a an ongoing account ownership discussion in place um, where, you know, it sounds like sales ops wants uh, the sales team to own all of these accounts, um, but we're looking at ways to make it clear that we're the community program owners. And then, you know, there might be some way to filter reports so that they don't end up affecting your, um, your goals. So I encourage you to take a look at that. And Christina, do you have anything else to add? Um, sure. Thanks, Naritzi. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the only thing I would add is that um, Madeline, we, Naritzi and I can own the opportunities themselves. Um, so that that's the path forward that that we've agreed with with the sales ops team. So no matter what, sales will own the accounts, and then we will own the opportunities. And then we're also working to add another field to the to the account record that will say community programs, and then have our name as an owner. So that that way um, that may help with some of the reporting concerns. And then also um, we do you know, Naritzi and I are um, really value building relationships with these, many of these program members. And so we, in some cases, would like to avoid uh, typical sales messaging, reaching these um, value program members. So we're also working with marketing ops to set up some automation to make sure that um, those sensitive partners are not in, um, in, a, in a usual outreach sequence. That is great. Thank you both for that additional detail and the link. That's perfect. Appreciate it. Sure, thanks for the question. Um, before we move on, I just wanna acknowledge what you know my background already says. It's St. Patrick's Day. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. There are some members in our team wearing special outfits. Uh, if we have time, we can go through those as well. But all right, I think Sid has the next question. Sid, do you wanna vocalize? Yeah, thank you. Um, the number of contributors, the, the number of people is uh, stabilizing according to the presentation. Uh, engineering now has a MRAR goal of um, uh, trying to engage, have uh, our biggest customers contribute to our code base. How do you think that will influence the number of uh, contrib contributors? And, and is there anything that, should we intensify that connection to that program? Or is there anything I can do to help? Thanks, Sid. I think I can take that. Um, I also see Kyle. So Kyle, feel free to jump in whenever <clears throat> if you want. So yeah, uh, we're closely working with um, uh, the engineering productivity team and we share uh, OKRs around increasing um, MRAR uh, through our contributors and also through our partners there. Uh, uh, let me uh, also in this next slide, but also I can add here, there is a link, on, there is a link with our shared OKRs. Um, and also, this is part of uh, a broader um, effort around uh, redesigning the whole contribute, uh, code contribute experience um, that is going to help us uh, increase uh, MRAR, always having in mind individual contributions, but also our organizations that contribute uh, to MRAR. Really quickly, as the host, do you mind saying what MRR, MRAR stands for, for those who don't know? I, I'd be happy to. Uh, so MAR uh, is pronounced priority, and it is merge request times AOR. So every time we get a merge request, we look at 
how much ARR is the organization uh, that it comes from generating. And so for example, if you have four merge requests and the average customer pays us $1,000, the MAR would be uh, 4,000. And our goal for the quarter, if I remember correctly, is about $20 million, or it's not really dollars, right? It's, it's MAR, uh, merge request times dollars. Um, merge request dollars, maybe we should call them. And the goal is to have the organizations that are uh, paying for GitLab, that are, that are wanting to use GitLab to make them familiar with contributing. For a lot of organizations, it's not a normal thing to contribute to the tools you are using. So we want to kind of actively reach out and encourage that. And also for our engineering department, it's super important that we keep um, realizing that like this, this is not just our project. It's not just GitLab engineering improving it. What's most important is the number of merge requests we get to the product, depending on our team size. But those merge requests can come both from our internal people and external people. In fact, most of the external contributions are probably like stuff people really want. And for those customers, what they did before was um, they made their DIY DevOps platform. Like they made something on top of point solutions. So, so they're familiar with kind of adding to the tools. They just did it in the form of a new platform on top. And now they, with GitLab, they can contribute to the tool itself. And if they make something, it can be shared across 100,000 organizations. Sorry, but maybe a bit longer than you bargained for, but I hope it's helpful. Very helpful. Thank you, Sid. And I, I'll just tack on to what Christoph said, just to the core question. I think we'll eventually see the number of contributors go up as um, engineering. We work with customer success and TAMs um, to, to get more uh, customers contributing to GitLab. Um, right now, we're trying to better forecast MRAR and the, a lot of the code contributor journey content that's in the slide deck will help reduce the friction for all contributors and therefore put us in a better spot to reach out to customers to contribute more often and start contributing. And just to add something really briefly, sorry, I just <laughs> forgot. Also, there is a uh, there is an effort, a common effort about getting more insights from these customers, from these people contributing, getting more insights um, along the side of getting insights from code contributors as well. It's like, what is their experience? Um, in the in the link there, in the in some of the issues, there are already some findings. Um, to give you an example, something that it's always. Something I heard, at least from the people that I've already talked to, is like about how much time they spent um, after landing a merge request, how much time it spent re triaging and reviewing it. And it's really difficult for them to forecast when it's going to be uh, put into production from our side, because it's really hard to understand our prioritization that we have if we apply any prioritization to the, to the MR. So it's really difficult for them to um, to forecast and understand when this is going to be landed, so when they will be able to uh, to use it. So insights like that, we want to pass them over to um, engineer to our teams, engineering teams, and try to tackle them. That's awesome, that, and that seems super useful. And yeah, probably having a closer communication loop between the people who prioritize on our side and those customers will help there. And I could imagine things like, hey. I want to contribute, but I have to get approval, sign off internally. I'm talking to our legal department. Can our legal department call your legal department to understand uh, what they're signing off on? Stuff like that, I think, might be in our future, but let's let's investigate and, and see what's most needed. Yeah, and that kind of segues into uh, a little bit more of what you have been doing, Christos, on the user journey or contributor journey. Do you want to really quickly talk a bit more about the insights that you learned for those that uh, are interested? Sure. Um, so um, what I did like um, in the past, I, I, I'm, I tried to capture the code contributor um, user journey uh, from the a fresh look, how people are going through the funnel of finding something to work on, the documentation guide, and I found out a bunch of uh, let's say endless loops. Um, people are that people are getting lost between dead links or links that are moving them away from uh, from the main object, which is like finding their way, finding something meaningful for them to contribute. Um, so um, in within the slides, there is a link to the mirror. It's like, also there is a slide. There is a small picture about how the current user journey, user flow is. 
and in the bottom is like the optimal one. The idea is that to be able to surface meaningful, meaningfully surface a code contribution opportunity for everyone, and also so uh, surface them in a meaningful way that it's easy for them to understand. To give you an example, um, GitLab has a lot of different groups, a little products, and a, a different projects uh, that sometimes they have different code bases or have different skill requ requirements in terms of skills and programming language. So when people are landing on the main GitLab repo, they cannot filter them out. Um, so we're trying to trying to think how we can better surface, like let's say for example, I'm interested in working with HTML, how I can find something HTML related or what are the projects that are in Vue.js or HTML or things like that. So we're trying to simplify um, the user journey for, uh, for con contributors um, for increasing our contributions and make it easier for them and make it also um, decrease actually the some friction that it might exist between uh, our engineers while reviewing um, reviewing a merge request and interacting with the community. And something new that we're introducing is the open by design approach, which is like a, a whole, um, it's a more like a cultural change about how we think of open source. Uh, normally a lot of organizations are think of open source like, hey, we just open by default, we open everything um, and we have open, we open source everything and people can find something to work on. But sometimes that that's not a people community is not working on prioritized issues because they don't understand what is a priority for them. So what something I want to introduce like open by design, which is like we intentionally open our source code we make sure that we communicate our priorities with our community and we find engaging meaningful ways and stressful ways for utilizing the community or engaging with the community uh, with less friction and making sure that these people have great experience the community has a great experience uh, contributing back to back to us so if you're a pm uh, spoiler alert i'm gonna reach out to you in the next um, days weeks because I would like to talk more about the open by design approach and how to uh, engage with the community. Thanks, Norizzi, for that. Yeah, fantastic, thank you. And I just want to uh, quickly tack on before we move to the next question, that apart from code contributors, we have many other ways that people can contribute to GitLab. And this past week, we added a new category called engagement where people can contribute by blogging about us, by organizing events and conferences around GitLab topics, by representing us at events and conferences. Um, and this is also uh, an effort to keep continuing the, continuously uh, diversifying our community and allowing all everybody to contribute. Um, so we would love feedback on that page. If you have it, I'll add it to our notes. Next up, Sid, you have the next question. Yeah, it's not a question, it's a statement uh, because uh, congratulations of being accepted in the Google Summer of Code program. That is, it's a super cool program. We've tried to get in, it's been a long, I've, I've wished for this for many years and I'm really glad to see it. I think it will be great for GitLab, the project, the company and the students. So really awesome to see that. Congratulations, everyone involved with that. Yes, and I think that here it's just important to also mention that we this would not have happened without Akriti Gupta. Um, I see David, you've also mentioned this in the notes, but um, she was a very strong proponent for making this happen and really brought it to the community team's um, attention. And then Christos helped chase it down. So thank you both for the work that you did there to make it happen. And uh, we also help with outreachy interns. For those of you who don't know, Outreachy is uh, an organization that helps support diversity in open source um, by offering scholarships or paid internships for women and minorities in technology. This year, we sponsored an Outreachy intern for the Git project because so far we haven't been able to uh, have participate ourselves as GitLab in that program. But now maybe with this, you will have extra leverage. So excited to see and explore that option. All right, Kyle Weavers. Sorry, uh, I'm not sure if I said your last name right, but. You, you, you did a great job. <laughs> that question. was perfect. 
Um, yeah, so I was looking at slide 11 and Christos, uh, this is a question for you. I wasn't sure what the 72,000 number for the quarter was. It just says contributions and count. Um, I assumed it was commits and, and I wasn't yeah. sure if it was for community contributors because when I look at the dashboard, I see a lot of, um, I see a lot of GitLab team members listed as well. Uh, that's a great point. Um, thanks for that. Uh, I need to investigate, but uh, generally it's just like, it's the, um, I have linked in the slide as well, and I also put it in here, the link to the community uh, dashboard at Bitergia. Um, let me investigate that. We had an, a known bug that was like about merge requests um, that it's being open and actually right now addressed by Bitergia. But thanks for that. Um, uh, for Christos, that note, I'm gonna take it I out. I think we should be able to, we generally have uh, uh, different data sources for this, uh, for this data. One is, direct Git raw data. And um, there's also the GitLab API. We generally use the GitLab API to count uh, to count MRs. And as Git, uh, sorry, as uh, Christos was mentioning, this was actually Git commits. So you should be able to switch the data source so that uh, everything is referenced on, the, on MRs only. And, and, and to be fair, Christos, I've looked at these charts like four, five times, probably a month. And I haven't, I didn't see it until the slide. So I'm not trying to be like a gotcha. It was just a really a question. So I appreciate that. No, 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 no. Thanks. No, that's great. Uh, that's great. Something that we have by the end of this month is to go through all the dashboards and make sure that all the information are accurate and we cross reference them with SciSense, making sure that everything is there, everything is accurate, and all the data are like appropriate. Yep. It, it, yeah. It, it, if we can measure MRs, I think that would be consistent with other engineering metrics as well. Um, I'm not trying to prescribe how you do work, just more um, giving you giving you that um, guideline. But that's it. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Um, since I don't see any other questions here for now, I would like to invite uh, John to tell us a little bit more about the Heroes Summit. Um, maybe like the purpose, how that went. Sorry, not John, anybody on the developer evangelist team. Um, and perhaps also a bit more about the current initiative with uh, stable counterparts. Thanks, uh, Narissi. I'll take that one. For the Hero Summit, it was a one day kind of mini conference, although it was very casual in nature, um, where we brought together our GitLab heroes. There was three content buckets for the day. One was a set of keynotes, which were longer talks that lasted about 20 minutes. Um, the middle part of the day was lightning talks, uh, which we used to give everyone a chance to kind of share their interest in um, what they're working on. And then the last part of the day was networking sessions. And the idea was just to kind of increase awareness of, of among the heroes around what everyone else is working on and their backgrounds and skill sets, and also foster greater kind of Community, sense of community among the heroes. And by all accounts, it was a success. Um, about 45% of the program members participated, which was higher than I was expecting. Um, the ratings were really high. The networking sessions were really engaging. Um, and I think everyone left you know, with a better sense of community and a better sense of who the other heroes were. So I think we achieved our goals. Um, you know, on the stable counterparts, um, this is a new initiative among the developer evangelism team to um, create stronger relationships with some of our partners in other divisions in GitLab where there's um, opportunity for us to add additional value. So um, Abu Bakr has been paired with the Alliances team and has been doing a great job. Um, Michael is paired with our engineering and product teams and uh, Brendan is paired with the sales organization. And the idea is to kind of model some other stable counterparts, um, you know, that, that are existing elsewhere in GitLab um, and just have like this consistent point of communication between our team and these other organizations who rely on our team. Um, and so that's, you know, easier for them to communicate. There's this sh shared understanding of each other's goals and, and what people are working on and their workloads and priorities. Um, and it's, you know, so far been, um, you know, off to a great start, but I think um, I'm excited what will happen as we kind of continue to grow these relationships over time. If anyone from the team wants to jump in and add anything that I missed, feel free to do that. 
I, 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 I only want to mention or highlight um, the, the quick actions blog post, which I wrote with Roman Kuber from engineering. Um, was a very good experience to learn something new, like getting myself more efficient. Um, and from the views, I think we are also going in a good direction with our OKRs for this quarter. I think it's for, for me, it's uh, 3,000 impressions from blog posts and events. And I think the blog post has run about 2,000 already. So it's, it's a good investment into a stable counterpart. Five yeah. minutes left. Okay, one other thing I want to mention is uh, one of the benefits we had from the Stable Counterpart Initiative is the launch of the Google GKE Autopilot. It was, I think it's the first, uh, it, it was the first uh, initiative I was able to do with the Alliance system. And we were able to highlight GitLab as a major partner of Google in launching Autopilot. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, let's see, I'm just going to check to see if there are any other questions. It looks like no. Um, so at this point, I, I do wanna also make sure that we celebrate a great milestone for the EDU program. Christina, do you wanna mention a little bit more about what your program is up to? Thank you, Nritzi. Sure. So um, last week, the GitLab for Education program hit a huge milestone. We've issued um, 2 million plus seats to education institutions in over um, 75 countries around the world since the program's initiation in 2018. Um, so we've, we're reaching a lot of, lot of students and educators out there. Um, of those students and educators, we're about to hit 1 million um, active. So not all of those renewed um, from the initiation of the program and, and in digging into, um, into some of those program members' um, uses and, and challenges along the way. We found out that really they're just, a lot of them don't know what DevOps is yet and they signed up and um, they definitely need more awareness and enablement content. And and so that is our focus um, for this next coming quarter. I'm part of that you see with the education evangelist um, position, but we're very proud and very excited to have um, nearly 1 million um, active users and we can't wait to see where we go from here. Thank you. Awesome, congratulations again. That's fantastic news. Um, one other thing that I wanted to highlight because you know our team cares a lot about um, all of our GitLab values, and we continuously strive to create more diversity, inclusion, and belonging in our community. Um, and I just want to highlight one of the initiatives that we currently have called the Beyond Code Meetup Series. And this is being done in conjunction with the Women's TMRG Group, which stands for Team Member Resource Group. Um, I saw Madeline here a little bit ago, but she's one of the uh, co-leads of that initiative. And um, the Beyond Code Meetup series is essentially a way for us to um, both bring new skill sets into our community, showcase you know, how GitLab is used across all stages from planning the project to actually executing, deploying, publishing, and beyond. Um, as well as just getting more women to speak at our meetup um, events. So we are inviting women from all departments of GitLab to sign up to speak for this series. Um, essentially, it will be giving a short presentation about who they are, what department they're part of, how they use GitLab in their daily work. Um, and then it'll follow up with uh, some sort of an AMA um, to uh, allow the community to ask more questions about this. And we've been talking to other, other teams here at GitLab. Um, we heard from a uh, sales development representative, an SDR, that they would be really excited about the content produced from these sessions because they get a lot of requests about how to use GitLab for project management, for example. And from the responses that we've already received from women who are excited to join this initiative, um, a lot of them are great at using GitLab for project management. So um, we hope to not only have these, uh, you know, events where we hope to attract uh, program or participants from a broader uh, 
skill set and just in general, just more diverse crowd. Um, but we also hope to produce content from these that will hopefully enable the rest of our team here to continue um, promoting GitLab in many ways. So hi all, we're at time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. And I just wanna really quickly say thanks to Jamie Rochelle, our new evangelist program manager to help for helping with that initiative. That is it, we'll wrap it up. Thank you 